what is up guys welcome back to a new video so before we begin make sure that you have subscribed to me on youtube and make sure to follow me on instagram and on social media i'll put all the links in the video description all right let's continue so guys back in 2018 i set up a car stereo at home and this is not just a simple car stereo setup this is a complete car stereo setup so this is complete with two amplifiers got jbl components for the front speakers the right side is here and the left side is over there i think i might, might have to turn that light off oh yeah now you guys can see properly so that is the left channel and this is the right channel slight mismatch in the height but yeah that's okay and on my previous video where i was setting the system up some of you guys did ask me where this shelf came from if they can buy it in the market so i custom designed this shelf myself and i got it built same goes for the table this is all custom designed by me to fit my needs over here same goes for that wardrobe and this whole shelf over here so you cannot actually buy this in the market. I custom designed it myself. So back in 2016 when we were designing our house, I kind of had a rough idea that I would be setting up a car stereo over here. So that's why you have this uh, thing over here to house the power supply and the car stereo itself with the speaker. And yeah, same goes for the amps. You can see how nicely they fit over here at the top of this shelf. So when I was designing this shelf, I did measure out how big these amplifiers would be. So that's why you have this perfect depth for the amplifiers. And that's how it looks. The wallpaper is new. This was not there before, so that's a new addition. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is show you guys all the components that I've used to build the setup. And then I'm gonna tell you guys about my usage experience with this car stereo at home setup because I have been using this for almost two years now. And also, if you would like to check out the building process, the link is over here. So I'll also link in these videos. All right, so let's continue. Okay, so I'm gonna start off by showing you guys the power supply because I get a lot of questions about the power supply that I'm using. So this is your standard PC power supply. This is from Corsair. So this is the Corsair VS650. So now I'm using a 650 watt power supply. Previously, I was using a 550 watts, which was not sufficient for this system. So from my previous videos, you guys might have noticed that this thing does work fine even when you turn the volume up on a 550 watt power supply. But when you turn the volume way up above 40, then that power supply would cut off, especially when the base hits. So that's why I've got a 650 watt and this one does not cut off no matter how much you play it. So this one is perfectly fine. Now the thing is with this particular amplifier, you can hook up two subwoofers. I have only one subwoofer, so it's 650 watts is more than enough. But in case you do plan to hook up two subwoofers, then I would recommend that you go with at least one kilowatt power supply. One disadvantage of this power supply is that this one does have a fan. So after about three or four years, I do expect the fan to fail because I leave this power supply turn on all the time. Now you guys may ask, why do I leave this power supply turn on all the time? Well, the thing is, if you switch off the main power, this stereo will forget the time and all of the settings, including the Bluetooth pairing settings. You have to go through the entire initial setup process. You gotta set up the equalizer, you gotta set up the low pass filter and all the settings on the stereo. So I just leave the power supply turn on. What I do is press and hold this button and then the stereo turns off. So when you turn the stereo off this way, the stereo will not forget the settings. But if I switch off this button, the stereo will forget everything in its memory. So that's one thing that I have to do is leave this power supply turn on. So in the near future, say about a year or so from now, I do plan to replace this power supply with a fanless unit and that will be 80 plus platinum rated power supply. So when it is idle, when the stereo is not running, it will be super duper efficient and it will not waste any power when it's idle. And because the new power supply will be fanless, I don't have to worry about the fan getting damaged after a while. And most likely I'm gonna go for a fully modular power supply because take a look at the mess back there. So yeah, I'm not gonna show you what's back there because there's a lot of cables back there. But yeah, 650 watts is more than enough for the setup. Everything works perfectly fine. And no, the wires back there and the power supply does not get hot even when you play the music at loud volume. Okay, so now let us move on to the car stereo itself or the head unit. 
this one is from Sony and the model is WX920BT. I bought this brand new from Amazon and this is quite a nice little head unit. It's got quite a lot of features. We've got USB so you can connect your phone or your pen drive. It's got a CD drive unit which I have never used and it's got extra bass feature does sound quite nice and this stereo also has NFC you can see the NFC logo over here and it's got Bluetooth and Bluetooth is how I have connected my main PC so if we go over here you guys can see WX920BT is connected via Bluetooth so yeah Bluetooth is quite an essential feature by the way you can change the color of these LEDs let's go to display and then let's go to button color tap on color and this is where you can change the color so these are the predefined colors which are there on the stereo cyan looks quite nice but i do prefer leaving it on pink because it kind of matches the clock which is over here so the pink color is all right don't have a problem with that you can change the brightness of the display it does become quite dim i'm gonna leave it at 10 and under sound settings you do get quite a lot of features so you can change the subwoofer level from over here you can change the low pass frequency i have set it to 80 hertz subwoofer phase and yeah let's go back and you can set a high pass frequency for the front and the rear speakers you can change the bluetooth volume then you've got eq then you've got preset eq i do prefer using my custom eq so you can change the eq settings from over here you can change the balance you can change the fader so if you want to play music only on the rear speakers you can do that from over here or you can change that to front speakers so it's got all the features that you would want from a high-end head unit and what i really like is that you can actually check the car battery voltage so right now it's receiving about 12 volts that is coming from the power supply so if this thing was connected inside your car you can actually check the battery voltage right from the car stereo so yeah i really like this head unit it's awesome i love it and this is doubled in you guys can probably tell that the actual stereo itself is only this much so the actual stereo is singled in but yeah the front of the stereo is doubled in and i quite like it now last year i did upgrade to an lcd head unit i've made a video about it you might want to check that out the link is here so this is the head unit i upgraded to this is a pioneer avh 299 bt now this is a really nice head unit but there is a slight problem with this this one does not have a dedicated subwoofer out so you've got front speakers and the rear speakers and it says here r slash sw so that means you have to tie in the subwoofer with the rear speakers and that kind of creates a problem because in case i want to shut off the subwoofer the rear speakers also shut off and because the rear speakers also shut off that means you'd no longer get that surround effect so at night whenever i'm watching netflix or movies i do shut the subwoofer off because you don't want too much bass and you don't want to wake up the neighbors the thing with this stereo is that whenever you used to shut off the subwoofer the rear speakers do shut off because the subwoofer is tied to the rear speakers so every time i have to adjust the subwoofer level i have to do that on the amplifier not really convenient so this is why i have gone back to the sony head unit which i had originally installed because this one has a separate subwoofer out on its back otherwise this pioneer head unit is really nice one thing i am a bit concerned about is that something is leaking out of this unit by the way just so you know this is a second hand unit so this was not new when i bought it i bought the second hand just to save some money but yeah so far so good i'm quite happy with this head unit so now we are going to check out the amplifiers that i used for this setup i've got two of them both of them are sony so this is the subwoofer amplifier this is the sony xmgs 100 awesome amp this can handle up to two subwoofers and then for the full range speakers, that is the front and the rear speakers, I'm using Sony's 4 channel amp. This is the Sony XMGS4. And this one also supports high res audio, so that's awesome. It's got a white status LED over here, it's got a little fan. And then this one does not have a fan though. And this one barely gets hot, even when I'm playing the music at high volumes. This one does get a little bit warm from over here, but then the fan starts and cools the amp off. Oh, and check this out, guys. If I switch the head unit off or if I put this in standby mode, the amps will turn off automatically. So that's because I've got the sensing wire running down to the car stereo. So if I press and hold this, 
the amps will turn off automatically when the head unit goes into sleep mode and if I turn it back on the amps will also turn back on and I really like how perfectly the amplifiers fit on the shelf that's because the shelf has been custom designed to accommodate these amps and guys if you take out these two screws you get access to adjustment dials so there are number of adjustment dials underneath this cover the subwoofer amp also has adjustment dials now I'm not gonna take these two screws out because I'll have to go into the other room and search for a screwdriver but yeah, I've got the adjustment dials adjusted so that the sound does not clip and I did spend quite a bit of time configuring the adjustment dials on the 4 channel amp and this is the microphone because this stereo has Bluetooth you can take phone calls right from the stereo so that was a brief tour of these two amps now let us talk a bit about the speakers all right so first i will show you guys the front speakers and then we will move on to the rear speakers so these are jbl gt 0609c speakers awesome speakers they've got amazing mid-range and you've got a tweeter here we've got a crossover box and you do have tweeter boost functionality if you feel that the high frequencies are not enough but these speakers sound awesome so let me just play a tune here and these speakers do move quite a bit So yeah these speakers so yeah these speakers do sound quite awesome you guys won't be able to tell because the camera does distort the sound but yeah these are awesome speakers now the enclosure is a cheap enclosure that i got from amazon i do plan to replace the enclosure sometime in the future i might want to I really want to get a proper enclosure for these speakers because I think the enclosure does limit the sound quality of these speakers. So uh, someday in the future I might want to get a ported enclosure that is slightly bigger than this, slightly taller like this and does include a tweeter mount. So yeah, all said and done these speakers do sound awesome and I love them. Now let us go and check out the rear speakers. Okay so this is my rear speaker, I actually took the entire enclosure out just to show you guys in a little bit more detail because I've got a light over here. Okay so these are Sony coaxial speakers, I've actually done a review of these, these are XB6941, I've actually replaced the front grill with another speaker. So these ones kind of have an open grill on the front. Also the model says XB, that means these are from the Sony extra bass lineup, so these sound quite nice and these are four way speakers that means you've got four speakers in one speaker unit and the enclosure that I'm using is a sealed enclosure once again someday in the future I might want to get a ported enclosure for these speakers as well and we've got speaker terminals here and if I flip this over that is how the speaker enclosure looks like so let me just put this back and then we'll play a song or something. And once again, I really like how nicely the speaker box fits in this shelf. So that's it. It's now installed. We'll just connect the wire and it will be running once again. So I've got the speaker hooked back up. And just to show you guys how amazing the bass is on these, I have turned the subwoofer off. So the subwoofer level is set to attune it. That means the subwoofer will be off and then I have set the fader to rear 15 that means only the rear speakers will play the music. Alright so extra bass is set to 2. Now let us play something. Okay so now the only the rear speakers are playing. Listen to this. Lights, 
So that shows you how amazing these extra bass speakers really are. So the rear speakers do sound quite nice. And lastly guys coming to the subwoofer this is once again a Sony subwoofer. I think this one is rated at 420 watts RMS if I'm not wrong. Let's check the data sheet over here. Okay so the model is XSNW1202S and this one is rated at 420 watts RMS. So this is a fairly decent power sub but I think the problem is the enclosure is way too small and also guys this is a sealed enclosure so i don't think the subwoofer is performing like it should but still though it's still able to shake the ground and all of these cabinets and stuff vibrate but just imagine guys if this subwoofer was installed in a bigger box which was ported and scientifically designed this thing would shake the entire house but once again the thing is i can't get a bigger box because there are space limitation inside the house if i get a bigger box then i won't be able to open up this wardrobe so this box is kind of suited for my room I, I really want to get a bigger box but i think this will have to do okay so i'm gonna play a song but do keep in mind guys there will be a little bit of distortion because of the camera's mic in person this subwoofer sounds awesome there are no distortions at all this wardrobe also vibrates a little so yeah there you will hear some things that you shouldn't but yeah let's go vibrating behind that the entire ground literally vibrates like crazy when you turn the volume up the problem is these wardrobes vibrate and there's a door behind that so that one also vibrates when you turn the volume up so you can imagine if i get a bass reflex ported box here that entire door will vibrate like crazy even at low volumes so i think i'm okay with this box this one does have crazy bass this entire thing just shakes and so does this thing so yeah when i'm listening to music and when i turn the volume up this front part of the desk also vibrates okay so now that i have given you guys a complete tour of the car audio system setup at my home now let me tell you guys some advantages and disadvantages of having a system like this because i have been using this for almost two years it's going to be two years later this year so yeah let's go over some advantages and disadvantages of having a system like this so we will start by advantages so the biggest advantage of having a system like this is that it is completely modular so in case you want to replace any component you can do that with a fair bit of ease so in case i want to upgrade the head unit i can do that i can install an lcd head unit without any problems if I want to replace the speakers, I can do that. Replace the power supply, that is also doable. You can also replace the amplifiers. And yes, you can use different brand amplifiers with a different brand head unit. So in case I want to use Pioneer head unit with the Sony amps, that is also possible. I can use Pioneer amps with a Sony head unit, that is also possible. And same goes for speakers. I'm using JBL speakers with Sony amplifier and a Sony head unit. So yeah, that is the thing with these car stereos, everything is modular. So in case you want to replace any component, you can do that easily. You can also add a second subwoofer to the setup because this particular amp supports two subs. And you won't be able to do that if you had one of those all-in-one stereos. So I guess being modular is the biggest advantage of this stereo. Now, when you build a car stereo setup like this, you have the option of building it according to your liking. Because all of the components are individual, so head unit is separate, the speakers are a separate set, power supply is separate and so are the amps. So that kind of opens up a possibility of building the system according to your liking. So you can have it set up like this on the shelf, otherwise you can get a big box and set up the system inside that including the subwoofer. So you can either have a portable all-in-one system or set up everything on a shelf just like I did. So yeah, that is the second advantage. You can build the system according to your needs 
according to the furniture and according to the space at your home. And finally, the third advantage I would say is that people get fascinated whenever they see a car stereo installed at home. And especially when they hear how good this thing sounds, whenever someone comes into my room, they just get fascinated by this thing. So those were the three main advantages of having a car stereo at home setup. So now we will move on to the disadvantages. So I think the number one disadvantage of having a system like this is that it is fairly complicated to set up. If you don't know what you're doing, if you aren't using proper gauge wires, then you kind of run into a risk of setting your stuff on fire. You can easily damage the car stereo, you can damage the amplifiers. And yeah, like I said, you can easily start fires if you are not using proper gauge wire and if you don't know what you're doing. So yeah, it does require a fair bit of expertise to set up all the system. So that is why I don't recommend everybody to go ahead and set up a car stereo at home. Because if you don't know what you're doing and if you end up connecting the wrong stuff at the back, then you kind of risk into damaging stuff and even starting a fire. So yeah, if you want a system like this, grab someone who is an expert in doing so and have that person set up this system at your your home. The second and the last disadvantage I would say that this system has is that when you switch off the power supply, the car stereo will forget all the configuration. So it will forget all the configurations that you have made in the sound, it will forget the EQ, it will forget the clock, it will, set, it will also forget the Bluetooth pairing information and it will also forget the display color. So whenever you switch the power supply off, it gets reset to its factory settings. And that's a problem, so that's why I do leave the power supply turned on all the time. So I guess that pretty much covers the two main disadvantages of having a system like this. Other than that, I don't think there are any other disadvantages to this. Also guys, there is no Dolby Digital on this system. If you were to buy a proper home theater system, that will have Dolby Digital in it. This one does not have, I think you do get head units which come with Dolby Digital to get that surround sound effect, but this one does not have it. And same goes for this one. This one also does not have Dolby Digital. So you're not gonna get that interactive 3D surround sound effect, but that's not a problem. All right, so I guess that pretty much wraps it up for this video. If you guys have any questions about this setup, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer those questions. And another question that I get, can you use a 12 volt adapter with this? No, you cannot. A PC power supply is your best bet, otherwise get a 12 volt battery. Why PC power supply? Because these power supplies are capable of outputting huge amounts of current. And secondly, the power that they output is quite clean so that there is no humming noise coming from the speakers when you play your tunes. So this system does sound quite clean. And one of the reasons is I use a PC power supply. All right guys, thank you for watching. Do stay tuned for more videos like these and I will see you guys next time.